what did John mean to you and what influence did his drumming have on you? For me, I was just a Stain fan and I got to do a couple interviews with him and him passing, you know, that was hard on me. But in your case, this was actually a, a friend of yours that, that you've spent time with. So if you could talk a little bit about John, that would be great. Yeah. Um, so John was one of the first, like, I guess, like, drummers in town that I met that I knew a lot about. And when I first met him, he was like the first like real rock star, I guess, that I, you know, was very aware of already because I'd been listening to those albums for years, you know, and his parts were just so like playable to me, like coming up. And they were so easy to digest. Like, it's like when I heard all that stuff, I just got it. Like, I was like, oh, that makes sense why that would be there. Or like, man, that's really easy to get under my hands, you know, at the time. So his drumming, like, served a big influence on me because of the amount of space and the the time that he put into his parts, you know. I mean, those are just some great, great records. But I met him along with, I think maybe three or four of like some other guys that I consider like some of my best friends of this day. I met them all in the same room and I just loved how like welcoming he was. Like he was so nice to me and he gave me his time. Like even before, like I started like really playing in Nashville, you know, like he, he gave me the time and, you know, later on I would kind of see how, valuable and important that is to give your time to people too, you know, or pay things forward and pay attention to people when they talk, you know, John just, he just had a really big impact on me. Like not only as a drummer, but like later on when I started touring in larger bands and stuff, like he was always there to kind of like tell me he was proud of me and I don't really know how to take a compliment too well, but with him, it kind of like helped me go, okay, well, I guess these guys are more or less becoming my peers now. So I should probably just listen to them and learn from them, you know, and he was just a good dude to learn from, you know, on that fundraising night, could you feel his presence while playing on his original drum kit, playing one of Stain's signature songs, mud shovel, could you feel him in that room with all the people that loved him performing all the music that oozed out of him over his career. Well, I definitely, I definitely knew how, like, you know, how high he sat on the drum kit when I sat down (laughs) behind, I was like, Oh, wow, this is, this is like way closer. Like the King upon his throne. Yeah. And there was a big picture of him behind me. So I was like, man, this is, I get to be, you know just like one of my heroes for for a few minutes like this is really cool you know like all the symbols were perfectly aligned and polished and you know the drum sounded great my uh drum tech and his old drum tech set the drum kit up together so they got to work together so i think that was really cool too like watching those two guys work together you know my guy and his guy you know and that was just just like the coolest thing ever you know because i think they ended up making friends like later on after that and then watching Sal kind of do his thing was like just magical, you know, it was, it really was like, I think that's kind of, it wasn't that I necessarily felt him in the room. It's that I got to be in an environment that he was in a lot, sitting behind the same kit with the same people watching me. I got to like live through him for just a second, you know, and I thought that was really nice. So I have some kind words sent in here from Tanya Leanne, the singer from Lydia's Castle. So you yeah. you, you performed uh, one of her, mm-hmm. one of her songs, which you know John um, before he passed away, that was the band that he was focused on, that he was writing music for, that he was growing with, yeah. and um, she also she was one of the main organizers for that celebration of life event. So this is what Tanya Leanne has to say. She says. This is a long one, so brace yourself for this. She says, often we hear the words, there's no one like him, repeated so many times that it becomes another worthless, watered-down phrase in our society. But when someone asks me about Dave, I truly believe those words identify him perfectly. He's a phenomenal musician, friend, husband, and father. 
While anyone can be one of those things, Dave checks all those boxes. What sets him apart is that he strives to always grow and improve. He has the drive to always be better. Most people stop growing when their talent starts to rise. It's almost as if a switch is flipped and laziness or comfortability creeps in. Dave, even as good as he is, he has such a humble heart that he goes above and beyond to evolve and build. He's always searching for ways to improve himself. He isn't afraid of a challenger putting in the work. That, mixed with the talent and good heart, is what makes Dave a phenomenal human being. So when someone asks me about Dave, I truly say with full confidence, there's no one like him. Because in the grand scheme of things, I know in my heart that there isn't, and he truly is, one of a kind. So that's from Tanya Leanne. Oh, thanks. Yeah, those guys are the absolute greatest. Every time I'm around them, like, it makes me, I don't know, I, it's like, I have to be on my toes too, but like, you know, I, I just appreciate them, you know, so much. And there's a lot of people like that, that I've kind of grown to love in the music scene and in Nashville and just in the industry in general, you know, like watching those guys was always great. We took them out a couple times and played a couple shows with them and I got to watch them do their thing. And I was like, yeah, that band's really good. Like I was always just kind of, you know, in awe of their drive. And anybody that has that kind of drive and consistency will always earn my respect. And watching them do what they did, I mean, it was respect immediately. Like I said, I have to have my shit together when I'm around them because they're so, like, they're good. They're good at what they do, you know? So it, it's humbling just to watch them. I really appreciate that. And, and not only are those guys, like, my peers, I guess, but like they're, they became some of my, my greatest friends. And to me, that matters a lot. I appreciate those kind words.